Alright guys, welcome back, and in the last tutorial what I did is I showed you guys how to create a simple choice box, in other words a drop down list, and what we did is we pretty much had it set up where the user could choose some kind of option, such as meatballs, and then whenever they click this button, it looked in the drop down list, extracted the value, and then you can do whatever you want with it. However, did you ever see those types of applications where you don't need to click a button to get the data? For instance, if you want to change the background of this app right here, um, maybe your options were like red, blue, green, so on and so forth. As soon as the user clicked one of these options, the background would change. So if you actually tried doing that in JavaFX, you would come across some issues. And the issue is this. Let me run this again. Now, whenever the user clicks one of these, it doesn't emit any event. In other words, you just can say whenever the user clicks, um, I'll show you guys, where is, all right, right here. So whenever you click the button, you see that it creates an event. So that is an event, that's something that happens and you can run code directly from that. However, changing an option or selecting an item in your drop down menu, that's not an event, at least not to JavaFX. However, we can get around it by adding something called a listener to this drop down menu. In other words, we can stick a little bit of code on here and then once we do that, it's going to be listening or waiting for the user to do something. So if we want to do that, we can actually get rid of this method because remember this is the code that happened whenever the user clicked the button and we're not going to be worried about the button right now. And we can also get rid of this right here. So I'll keep the button on the screen right here, but it just won't do anything for this tutorial just because I don't feel like deleting it all. All right. So in order to pretty much simulate emitting an event whenever the user clicks or chooses one of these items, uh, let me see. listen for, um, listen for, yeah, selection changes. All right. What we first need is a reference to the drop down menu, choice box. Let me tighten this up. It annoys me having two lines between. All right. Now, the method that we tack on this is get selection model. Now, there are different kinds of ways. You know how I told you guys that drop down list is one list. There's also like a tree, and I'll show you guys another list in the next tutorial. But basically, different types of lists have different types of selection models. Whenever you're using a drop down list, you can only select one item. However, there are, you know, some other lists. For example, you see how I selected two items in here? That's another type of selection model. Um, again, we really don't need to worry about the different types right now, but I just want to explain to you guys what get selection model means. Now, once you have that, you call a method called selected item property. Now, of course, this is essentially just the selected item. The item that they choose it has properties on it. In other words, just think of this as the item that the user selected from that list. Now, once we have that, we can add a listener. So what this listener is going to do is it's going to sit on pretty much um, your item and it's going to wait for something to happen. In other words, what's the one thing that you can do? <laughs> you know with menu items you can click them so whenever that event occurs it's gonna emit three parameters so just like before remember whenever we use lambdas what happens is it's pretty much a short condensed version of a function and your parameters go on the left hand side and the body of the function or the code that you want to execute goes on the right hand side so whenever the user chooses the item from the drop down list we actually pass in I don't know if, uh, if I alright so it's not popping up but I'll just talk to you guys the old value new value alright so it's gonna toss in three parameters this is essentially just um, the list item itself or the property I think V stands for observable this is always in the documentation but this is pretty much the property of the item itself this is the old value so if you had apples selected and you're moving to bacon this would be apples and of course the new value what would be the new item that you selected so again if you're going from like um, 
ham to meatballs, this would be the list item, this would be ham, and this would be meatballs. So now whenever they select a new item, I'm just gonna, let's say, print something out on the screen. And actually, if we go, I'll keep it right here all on one line. All right, so system, out, not pit, out print line and we'll just print the new value or the item that they selected alright that looks pretty good let me go ahead and run it and check it out so again we have apple selected by default let me go to ham prints out ham let me go to meatballs prints out meatballs so again this is occurring before I even click the button actually when I click the button nothing happens so if you ever want the functionality to do that then there you go and again just to demonstrate what the old value is the old value is the item that was selected before so if I have apple selected and I select bacon then it prints out the old value so there you go but anyways that is how you listen for changes on the drop down menu boom roasted see you guys later